Pseudoaneurysms or false aneurysms can form in any part of the arterial circulation as a result of iatrogenic trauma weakening the wall. They are characterized by swelling, pulsation, pain, and bruits on auscultation. An urgent ultrasound should be requested to confirm the presence of a pseudoaneurysm. Pseudoaneurysms can initially be managed symptomatically with analgesia. They can then be manually compressed, preferably under ultrasound guidance, or injected with thrombin if they have a narrow neck, or treated surgically. Surgery should, however, be avoided if possible, as ordinarily the patient will be on dual antiplatelet therapy. Hematomas are common complications associated with arterial access, as well as the use of anticoagulant and antiplatelet agents, all utilised in PCI. They are usually mild and self-limiting, but can look fairly alarming to the patient. Very rarely, if extensive in the arm, they can result in compartment syndrome requiring surgical decompression. Most management for hematomas is usually just conservative and includes analgesia, compression if acute or evolving, and rest and elevation of the limb if it's the arm that's affected. If severe hematomas are tender, you should consider ultrasound to exclude a pseudoaneurysm. Retroperitoneal hemorrhage is a dangerous complication associated with PCI that can sometimes be difficult to recognise as bleeding into the retroperitoneal space cannot be seen externally. Clinicians should suspect a retroperitoneal hemorrhage if the haemoglobin value falls, especially in the context of a post-procedural drop in blood pressure. Another sign will be abdominal pain on a straight leg raise examination, or Cullen's and Gray-Turner signs which usually occur late in the presentation as discoloration or bruising around the umbilicus and abdominal flanks. Early diagnosis of retroperitoneal hemorrhage is imperative. Fluid resuscitation should be initiated as soon as possible for circulatory support, and emergency CT scanning of the abdomen should be obtained if there is concern of retroperitoneal hemorrhage to confirm the diagnosis. Manual compression of the bleeding site may help if the femoral vessels are easily compressible and the hemorrhage may require emergency blood transfusion, reversal of anticoagulation and even interventional radiology to stent or open vascular surgical repair. Distal embolization may occur as a consequence of instrumentation of the aorta. Introduction of instruments into the aorta may cause cholesterol embolization from existing plaques. This embolization can involve peripheries and also renal and other end organs which may present with organ-specific findings such as renal impairment. After performing a PCI, it's important to monitor patients for clinical and vital signs that indicate bleeding due to arterial access complications. Remember, you have to think about retroperitoneal hemorrhage if the patient is shocked with no obvious external bleeding since it can often be occult. Other complications of arterial access and instrumentation of the aorta include distal embolization or renal injury. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.